This is a baffling story about a lady mysteriously disappearing in a California forest back in 2020, but a series of sightings and a totally creepy twist to the story would leave investigators scratching their heads, wondering what exactly happened. So, if this is the kind of content you're into, hit that like button, and make sure you subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. So now, on to the story. In March 2020, the World Health Organization deemed the COVID-19 outbreak a global pandemic, meaning it had spread to all corners of the globe. So, countries started telling their residents to stay home and to have no contact with anyone who didn't live with them, thinking that would stop the spread. At first, leaders were pretty optimistic that these measures would contain the virus, and before long, things would be back under control and people could go back to their normal lives. But by June, so three months into this pandemic, the number of COVID-19 cases had continued to rise and people had to face the hard truth that this virus wasn't going to go away. With that, people also had to face the fact that the lockdowns probably weren't going away either. People started to question just how effective these total lockdown measures were and whether or not they were actually slowing the spread of the virus. So by June of 2020, Sandra Hughes, a 54-year-old woman, asked herself how she could live a full and happy life within the confines of quarantine. Up to that point, her life hadn't quite followed the script she envisioned. Two marriages, both ending in divorce and no children. Despite living in Maui, it really didn't feel like home to her. She had lived more or less a nomadic existence up to that point. So in essence, she hadn't really put down roots anywhere to call home. She was an accountant, but her true love was nature and the outdoors. While in college, she also studied wilderness survival and was deeply passionate about it. She had always been the outdoorsy type, with dreams of someday becoming a park ranger. But life took its turns, and she became an accountant not a park ranger. Now, 30 years later, thanks to the pandemic throwing a wrench into everyone's plans, Sandra spotted a silver lining, a chance to get back to her roots in nature. At the end of the month, Sandra had sold her home in Maui and made the move to Madera County, California. So on June 26th, once Sandra was in her new place, she called her family and told them she planned on a solo camping trip in the Sierra National Forest and that she would let them know when she returned in a couple of weeks. This was a win-win for Sandra. She knew that getting back to nature and the outdoors would bring some much-needed happiness and fulfillment to her life. Plus, it neatly aligned with quarantine guidelines since she'd be all alone in the middle of nowhere. So right after talking to her family on the 26th, Sandra packed her gear and supplies in her silver Saab sedan and drove just over an hour south and then east until she was in the heart of the Sierra National Forest. She would drive through the forest, eventually ending up at a spot called the Johnson Meadows. So Sandra parked her car right on the edge of the Johnson Meadows, off to the side of the road so she didn't block any other traffic, collected her gear and supplies, and took off into the heart of the Johnson Meadows to find a suitable place to make camp. Fast forward six days to July 2nd, when a group of hikers walked out of the forest and into the meadows. As they walked along, they saw what seemed to be a tent and a campsite up ahead. Approaching it, it was obviously a campsite, but no one was around. Now that's not uncommon. Lots of hikers and campers visit that area every year, so the hikers decided to skirt around this campsite. But as they got closer, they saw that the campsite looked deserted and was in shambles. That's when the hikers decided to investigate a little further. So they walked over to this campsite and saw a backpack with its contents scattered all around. Food, papers, even the tent was all messed up. It was unclear if maybe an animal had gotten into the campsite and caused the ruckus, or if someone may have done this intentionally. Not wanting to take any chances, 
they noted the location on their map, and when they got back to where they had cell service, called and notified the Madera County Sheriff. Later that day, deputies headed out to the Johnson Meadows, where they found the campsite, just as the hikers had described it, in shambles and deserted. Looking through the various paperwork strewn about, police found a couple of ID cards, all bearing the name Sandra Hughes. After leaving the Johnson Meadows, the police contacted Sandra's family for more information. They told police that Sandra was an extremely neat and tidy person and would never leave her campsite in such a mess and that something must have happened. They said they hadn't talked to her since June 26th, right before she left, and that they had no idea where she was presently. Based on the evidence they had at that time, police officially classified Sandra Hughes as a missing person. They started a huge search with hundreds of people on foot with tracking dogs. They had helicopters in the air, and the police were asking every hiker and camper they ran into if they had any contact with Sandra. She would be instantly recognizable since she had dyed her naturally brown hair blue before leaving on her trip. But no one had seen her, and no new evidence was uncovered as to her whereabouts. But two days later, a report came in. On July 4th, another group of hikers were passing through the Johnson Meadows, and they saw a woman standing by herself off to the side of the meadow. This woman had no gear with her, was barefoot, and had a bruise on her face. She was wearing a black t-shirt and blue jeans and was just kind of standing there. As these hikers walked past her, she was just staring off into space, making no attempt to make contact with them. Since she didn't seem injured, besides the bruise on her face, and didn't appear to need any help, the hikers just continued on past. When the hikers returned to the parking lot, they saw the missing person flyers for Sandra Hughes and immediately knew that was who they saw standing in the meadow. The blue hair was a dead giveaway. They immediately called the Madera County Sheriff, who headed back out to the Johnson Meadows where these hikers had seen her, but by that time she was gone, along with any other evidence that she had been there. The next day, July 5th, Sandra's silver sob sedan was located five miles north of the destroyed campsite. It was at the bottom of a ravine near a winding forest road. The front of the car had some damage, leading investigators to believe that Sandra had been driving down the road, hit a tree, and rolled down into the ravine. There weren't any outward signs that Sandra had been injured, but all of Sandra's belongings that she kept in her car were strewn about at the bottom of this ravine. This was similar to the condition her campsite was found in where all of her stuff had been thrown everywhere. Police began to believe that perhaps Sandra had some type of head injury received either during the accident or at the campsite, which impaired her cognitive function and that maybe she was lost in the woods and had no idea where she was or how to get out. They did not believe that she was purposely trying to evade them. Police briefly entertained the possibility of foul play, but it was quickly brushed aside they decided they would leave Sandra's vehicle where it was at the bottom of the ravine with a note for her in the window saying that people were trying to find her and provided a contact number if she happened to come across it. The ongoing search focused mainly on the area where the car was found, but nothing new turned up. But on the night of July 12th, so a full week after the car was found, a search team two and a half miles north of the vehicle at a place called Spotted Lake, found a sleeping bag lying on the ground in the middle of nowhere. This is a tough area to get into, with no main roads or trails leading to it, and is actually inside Yosemite National Park. This sleeping bag, which looked like it had been recently used, would end up being identified as belonging to Sandra Hughes. By the time the rest of the search teams got to the area and searched all around Spotted Lake, there was no trace of Sandra anywhere. According to maps, 
It looked as if Sandra was heading generally north. Johnson Meadows, the ravine where the car was found, and now the sleeping bag, all formed a line from south to north. According to the information they had, she was alone, with no gear, and barefoot, traversing an area that was rugged and steep, and authorities knew that if she wasn't found soon, she would more than likely perish. The full-on search would continue for another week, but by July 20th, nothing new had developed, and regrettably, authorities had to abandon the search. On August 9th, so three weeks later, two hunters were driving down a forest road several miles east of where the car had been found. Coming around a corner, they saw a woman off to the side of the road, leaning against a tree up on a hill. She had no equipment, no tent, no pack, no nothing, and no one else was around. Being in an isolated part of the forest, the hunters decided to pull up to check on the woman. So when the hunters approached, they got within 10 to 15 feet of her and they tried to get her attention. All this woman did was just stare off into space. After a few minutes of trying to flag her down with no response, they figured that since she didn't appear to be injured or in distress, she must have been there purposely, so they decided to leave. When they returned to town later that day, they saw one of the missing person flyers and realized the woman they saw was Sandra Hughes. The blue hair once again gave it away. The hunters reported this to the police and added that she looked like she dropped quite a bit of weight since she had disappeared. She had been wearing a floral top and overalls, which to the police didn't make any sense. When she was spotted a month earlier, she had been wearing a black t-shirt and jeans, but she had left all of her belongings at her vehicle and her campsite. So police went back out to the spot where the hunters had seen Sandra, but as usual, she wasn't there, and there was nothing to show that she had ever been there. After this, the case hit a dead end, and both her family and the authorities began to realize the harsh truth that she would most likely never be found. Nevertheless, there was one more unsettling turn of events waiting for them. Fast forward a year to July 21st, 2021. Jake Gorba, his wife Victoria, and their three children were driving up a forest road headed for the summit of Shut Eye Peak in the Sierra National Forest. Shut Eye Peak is about five miles south of Johnson Meadows, where Sandra's campsite had been found. Jake and Victoria decided to take a break for lunch, and they found a flat meadow budding up to some trees about halfway up the mountain. As Jake and Victoria were gathering their things for their little picnic, they heard their three-year-old son Caden, who was sitting in the back of the ATV, talking out the window. They looked over to see who their son was talking to, and it was clear he wasn't talking to his siblings. Caden's attention was fixed on something outside, in the tree line, and whatever it was, he was having an intense conversation with it. When Victoria asked her son who he was talking to, his response would send shivers down her spine, and what would happen over the next few minutes would convince the Gorbas that they weren't going to the top of Shut Eye Peak that day. They were turning around and leaving. That night, Victoria would post on Facebook about the encounter and what Caden had said, and a couple hours later, the Gorbas received a phone call from the Madera County Sheriff's Office. They had seen her post and wanted to meet with the Gorbas the next day. And so, the next day, a deputy came out and met with the family. What the family and Caden would tell the deputy is that when Victoria asked Caden who he was talking to, Caden turned and looked at his mom and said, there's a woman right over there and she needs our help. He pointed out the window to the tree line, so Jake and Victoria looked but didn't see anyone. Caden became more and more insistent, saying there's a woman over there lying face down with her legs straight up in the air and she's dead. 
So now Jake and Victoria run into the tree line to find whoever this is, but there's no one there. And all the while, Caden is pointing right to where Jake is standing, saying, she's right there. This unnerved Jake and Victoria so much that they decided they were leaving right that second. As they get in the ATV and turn around to leave, Caden is still looking out the window and talking to this supposed dead woman in the tree line. The Gorb has wasted no time getting off that mountain. In that evening's Facebook post, Victoria added the description that Caden had given. The woman was wearing a black t-shirt and jeans, and she had blue hair. The post came up in a deputy's Facebook feed, and he immediately recognized the description and contacted the Gorbas. The deputy had prepared a photo lineup to see if Caden could identify who he talked to. Several photos were presented, and Caden identified a photo of Sandra Hughes as the dead woman in that meadow. So the deputy, Jake, and Caden went back up to the meadow halfway up to Shut Eye Peak and had a look around, but... As usual, nothing was found. To date, Sandra Hughes's whereabouts remain unknown, and the circumstances surrounding her disappearance continue to baffle investigators. The case is still open, so anyone with information is urged to contact the Madera County Sheriff's Office at 559-675-7770. So, that's going to do it for this episode of The Sheldrake Files. As always, if you enjoyed the episode and this is the kind of content you're into, hit that like button and make sure you subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. So, from all of us here at The Sheldrake Files, thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time.